So, we go to the axioms of probability. The axioms of probability. By the axioms of probability are those rules that we must take note whenever we are dealing with probability problems. Anytime you are dealing with a probability problem, you must take note of those rules. They are very important. The first, which is very important, is that probability, okay, let's make it like this. Let A be an event. Let A be an event and A be a member of, uh, of the set S. You remember the set S is the sample space. So the first thing we note is that the probability of an event must be positive in value. So anytime you're finding the probability, you cannot have a negative probability. You can't have a negative value for probability. Probability must always be positive. The second thing is that probability must range of an event must range between zero and one inclusive. And it must be a real number. Now three, three is that the probability of the sample space is equal to one. So by the time you add up or find the probability of all the possible events in a set or in a sample space, it is going to give you one. What it means is that, like the example I gave you earlier on, it is possible for you to pick any of the balls, either red, yellow, or um, blue. So the probability is always sure that you will always pick a ball from the set. So the probability of a sample space is always equals to one. And another thing we must know is that the probability that of an empty space is equal to zero. By that it means that the probability of an event of a no event. So this this represents no event. This actually represents no event. That is what that means. It represents no event. Now number five, the probability that A will not happen is the same thing as one minus the probability that A will happen. So if the probability of me going to school is one all over three, if the probability of me going to school is one all over three, for instance, it means that the probability that I will not go to school will be one minus one over three, and that will be equals to two over three. So that is what this means. The probability of me going to school, uh, A complement, this means A complement. So the probability of, uh, that A will not happen is simply one minus the probability that A will happen. Another axiom of probability is that if a and B are mutually exclusive events, are mutually exclusive events. What do we mean by mutually exclusive event? This means that they have no common outcome. These events have no common outcome. By no common outcome, it means this event, this and this cannot happen at the same time. I mean, the two events, A and B, cannot happen at the same time. What that means, what that simply means is that if A, so we have this mathematically, so mathematically, we have probability of A or B. Probability of A or B is the same thing as probability of A plus the probability of B. But, but take note that this is simply a mutually exclusive event. It can be more than just two elements. It can be AI. It can be AI element in S where I ranges one, two, like that. So it can be more, it can be three um, events. It can be four events. So in such a case, the probability of uh, AI happening is simply the sum Sorry, you can put union here. Uh, the probability of uh, the union, sorry for this, probability of the union uh, i from 1 to n of ai will simply be um, the, the sum. It will simply be the, the sum of um, the probabilities of ai. So i from 1 to n. So, but take note that i uh, and um, i is not equals to, take note that i is not equal to j so we are talking about two different events so this is what happens when you have more than one mutually exclusive event all you just do is to add their probabilities take note you just add their probabilities 
But if the events are not mutually exclusive events, by not mutually exclusive events means it means that probability of A or B or both. That's probability that A or B or both is simply probability of A plus the probability of uh, B minus the probability of A intersection B. Now that takes me to what is probability of A intersection B. Now this simply means that the probability that of A and B is the probability of the probability of A and B happening. The probability of A and B happening. So we use the intersection to represent the probability of A and B happening. And if the probability of A and B is possible, we say then then A and B are independent events. So A and B are independent events if A intersection B is not actually empty. What I mean is that this event and this event can happen at the same time. Like I talking and teaching at the same time. So my talking is an event, my teaching is also, my writing on the board is also an event. So you see this can happen at the same time concurrently. So there I say that A and intersection B is non-empty, meaning that probability of A and B will be the same thing as probability of A and B in such a case where we have independent events, where we have independent events, probability of A and B will be probability of A times probability of B. So take note of this, the probability of A and B happening is probability of A times the probability of B. Very important rule we must understand. Now still on take note, I did not uh, number this. Sorry for that. <laughs> so this is my seven, or oh, this is six, and this is my seven. So we can call this eight. All these axioms are very important for we to understand because I'm going to apply them in solving problems. Now, I move on to explain another um, theorem of probability. So suppose, so suppose B um, is an event, it's a given event, it's a given, it's a given event, and probability of B is not actually equal to zero. That means it's a given event and the event is actually possible. So the event is actually possible. Then probability of A given that B, probability of A given B is the same thing as probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. This formula is what we refer to as the formula for conditional probability. This is formula we use for conditional probability. Conditional probability. Now, in conditional probability, it, depends, it shows that this A can only actually exist given B. Can actually exist given B. So, this also shows that probability of A and B will be the same thing as probability of A given B times probability of B. So, this actually proves this. Now, see the interesting thing. Now, in conditional probability, we believe that the two events are not independent. That means they are actually dependent events. So what we are having here, we have dependent events. Dependent events. And it can be proven. Proven because if they are dependent events, then, then, then if, then if probability of A uh, and B is actually equal to probability of A times probability of B, if we substitute that here, you will see the probability of A given B will be equal to probability of A times probability of B divided by probability of B. And you see this will cancel this. And you see the beauty of mathematics that the probability of A given B is actually probability of A. Probability of A at the end of the day. Very, very important for you to know. But take this formula to be this. And this formula is a formula that leads to the popular Bayes theorem. It leads to the popular Bayes theorem. Now, what does Bayes theorem say? The popular Bayes theorem simply says something. Bayes theorem. Bayes theorem is for is good for we to understand. So, if we are given, 
AI events. We are given AI events, and this AI event are actually dependent. AI uh, dependent events. AI dependent events. AI not equals to AJ. Uh, let us leave the. Let us take I not equals to J, and um, probability of probably maybe B is given. Then probability of A I, or let me say A J, probability of A J given that particular B will be the same thing as probability of B. In this case, probability of B given. A I, oh sorry, A J times the probability of A J itself. Now you divide this by the sum of every other thing, by the sum of the probability of B given the other ones like A I times the probability of any other A I. So this I ranging from 1 to N. So this formula is what we call the Bayes theorem. And it is used, you know, this one is just one event and another event. But in the base theorem, you have one, if you have one uh, given probability, then you can have two or more of these. So you have two or more of these, this i can represent from one to two. If you have three, it will be from one to three, and so on and so forth. Now, this is very interesting, and that is why we see that in probability, for example, for example, sample space. In the tossing of that, I explained that it is from one to six, but in the toss of a coin, and a flip of a coin, the sample space, the flip of a coin, the sample space will be head, tail. So this is what we have in the sample space. And we have the event. And the event, the probability of having a head, which is in this case one over two, and the probability of having a tail, which in this case one over two also. Now you will ask me a question, where did you get this formula from? And that gives me the mathematical or classical definition of probability. The mathematical or classical definition of probability permit me to put that here so the probability that a an event a will occur it's simple is simply the number the number of favorable outcome favorable outcome in the independent or oh, sorry sorry in the um, trial, random experiment, divided by the total possible, possible outcome, total possible outcome uh, in the experiment, in the experiment. So you can use this formula, or you can just remember this. <laughs> Very interesting too. You can just remember this. Very easy. So this is the favorable outcome over, over the total possible outcome. Let me give you a very simple example. Um, in that bag, we had three red balls. We had four blue balls. We have um, two. We have two yellow balls. Uh, let's just assume that I know it was more than two. So just assume this for the meantime. Now, you can just ask me a question here. What is the probability of picking a red ball? What is the probability of picking a blue ball? What is the probability of picking a yellow ball? So I can use this formula. Where the probability of picking a, a red ball will be three, since you have three red balls. That's the number of favorable outcome. It should be three divided by the total, which is the sample space, the number in the sample space. And there's a number of balls in the sample space. And that's the number of balls here, the total here, which is three plus four plus two. And that will give me three divided by uh, nine. Nine, and that is one over three. And this will give me four over nine. And why this also will give me two over nine. Now you can see that if you check uh, numbers, see that this is higher than every other, oh, so this is higher than every other number. This is higher. That means the probability of picking a blue ball is higher. It's possible that if I keep closing my eye and picking a ball, it's possible that I'm going to pick a blue ball. So this is just a very simple illustration of uh, probability. But let us go into something more interesting. So you can now understand why I wrote one over two here. Because picking, having a head is one divided by the total, which is two. Yeah, having a tail is one, and the total of the event in the sample space, which is two. So that's why we have this. 
at the end of the day. And take note that the probability of the sample space here is simply equal to 1. If you add half plus half here, it's going to give you 1. Also, if you add everything here, 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus one, nine, 2 over 9, or 4 over 9 plus 2 over 9, it is going to give you 1. That is why I said earlier on in the algorithm of probability, that probability of a sample space is equal to 1. Now, in a toss of a fair die, a toss of a fair, fair die, uh, the probability of having a 1, probability of having a 2, probability of having a 3, probability of having a 4, probability of having a 5, and probability of having a 6 are all equal. Why? Because whenever you toss a fair die, the chances of having any of this side, they are equal, unlike this and unlike this. So it's um, like, like this and unlike this, I mean. So like this, this will be 1 over 6, 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 and even. So they, they refer to, you use a language equally likely. So you see the language equally likely in probability. It means that the chances of having any of these numbers are all equal. And these are the probabilities of this um, random variables. By the time you add all this together, you say that you are going to have the probability of the sample space to be equal to 1 at the end of the day. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be solving just two questions to illustrate those probability, but don't forget that the probability of an event is the function that maps that event towards this, and that is very, very important. That is the mathematical definition of the probability of an event. Thank you very much and stay tuned for the next video. Bye.